what you do or for what other people do, you know, for video or still, it shocks you. Yeah, absolutely. I use or I've I've made a lot of contacts with uh, theater owners over the years, and I get uh, a lot of people reaching out to me who want to film videos or movies. And uh, there's a theater here in Massachusetts uh, that I do a lot of that with, and you know they they ask me, okay, well you have you have you're setting this up, so please come to the theater and stay here with them because we don't want to. So I'll hang out with these people, and they're using these. Like some, the the one I can think of, they're using these tiny little mirrorless Sony cameras, uh huh, and they have all these attachments on it, you know, like a mic and um, a gimbal and just all these, and it's it's very interesting to see because it's the camera is just it's a little bit bigger, like it's probably the size of a smartphone, but three times as thick. And it's just so small, and then all these things on it, and they're they're filming it. And when you see the video, it's like uh, amazing quality. It looks like it was shot on a giant uh, camera. Well, that's because technology has changed. I mean, I, I t- like I, this one uh, producer director I talked to. I mean, they he said they used to use hundred cameras that cost a couple hundred thousand dollars. He goes, you know, now you know they use the cameras. I think they it was one of the Panasonic models. I can't even think of it. But he said with the lens and, you know, all that stuff was like under around $2,000 range. But they used a multiple of like seven of them, you know, to make the movie. But the the point is, I mean, it was cheaper than this one, you know, big professional camera. Even to right. rent. They said they couldn't even have rented the, the equipment for what it cost to buy the equipment. Wow. That's, that's amazing. Faces. I got to ask. I was just going to say this. I, there's some good indie movies that are done off of <clears throat> cell phones. <laughs> yeah, there is. Oh. Now, you had a yeah, question, I, James? I, I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I was going to ask Matt, and, and all the uh, pictures that he's taken throughout the years, has he gone back and found, you know, maybe possible pictures of a uh, spirits or ghosts in, in maybe the windows or in the buildings that you've taken these pictures at? I've I've looked, but I haven't really seen anything that uh, other than uh, like so it would be like uh, light light distortion, which is just caused by the uh, I, I shoot with a very wide angle lens. So if there's even a little light up, like a like a light on on the side, it can sometimes cause like a rainbow effect in certain areas of the the photo. And that's pretty much the most that I've seen. I haven't actually sat down and gone through any of the places that are supposed to be haunted to see if there was anything. But I, I should probably do that. Well, I would recommend it. James got a picture one time uh, of a guy next or something. What next to a tree? Yeah, that actually that was uh, last October. Matter of fact, about a year about a year ago today, actually. And that was in uh, Medina Cemetery. It was a picture of a spirit. I actually seen him, and I, I asked him. I said, "Hey, you know, can I take your picture?" And he he come out behind the tree. I took three pictures in a row, and he, he was in one of them. And I was blown away. Uh, he's there, plain as day. He's just standing there. <laughs> so you you saw the spirit behind the tree, and you asked him to come out, and he walked out to take a picture. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I you know I've. I've come done this for a long time. A lot of spirits, they don't want their picture taken. Some of them, they do. And then even when you take their picture, they don't seem to show up on camera sometimes. But this one actually showed up, and it, and it was amazing. Yeah, I remember seeing that picture, too. I'd love to I, see that picture. Yeah, that was an amazing picture. And, you know, and then I got that, it, the month before, I got that picture of the uh, lady's face down at Gretchen's Lock in that old abandoned building. And that was another amazing picture. And uh, I took two in a row. She wasn't in the first one, but she was in the second one. Same same uh, position, same boom, boom in a row. And it was amazing. It was like her hair is all messed up. It was a spooky picture, but it was a good picture. Now, now very cool. Matt, uh, what is the name of your book that is coming out? Uh, it's after the final curtain. America's abandoned theaters. 
Now, where is this going to be available at? Uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, your local bookstore. You might have to special order it. But it's, it's uh, coming out on November 5th, and it will be yeah available at bookstores everywhere. Now, uh, I take it it's going to have a lot of photographs and stuff of all your work? It has, uh, yeah, a lot of photographs and a short write-up about the history of each theater in the book. It's got a, I wrote a little introduction, and it's got a forward by Tim League, who is the founder of the Alamo Draft House Cinema Chain. Interesting. Now, do you have a website, too, where people can check you out? I do. It is uh, afterthefinalcurtain.net. Okay. And I post their summary regularly about you know, the theaters I visit or uh, places that I'm going to be at, giving you know, uh, talks, lectures. There's a, a movie about historic theaters that I'm in that I'm doing some Q&As for across the East Coast. Interesting. Well, I wish you all the success on your book and everything. I do want to, you know, say thank you for coming on Night Dreams. I, I really appreciate you coming on. And, you know, I'm sure people will check out your website. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Okay, Matt, you take care, my friend. Okay, you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Could you imagine, though, James, going in, in all those places and not getting any pictures of spirits and stuff like that. I, I you know, it's kind of I, unique. I, I'm telling you, I, I bet if he looked and really zoomed in on some of them, that there's some spirits there that he caught, didn't even know he caught. I would have think so. I mean, let's face it, going to like some of the old mental hospitals and the, the prisons and jails and stuff like that. I mean, let's face it, especially mental hospitals. The, the amount of pain and anguish, especially if we're going to go turn of the century, you know, th- they didn't take care of the mental uh, patients. They didn't, you know, they were going around in, in filth. They were going around, you know, like you mentioned, they if they even try to bite uh, any of the staff members or another patient, their teeth came out right away. That was gone. I mean, you know, the, the tortures with, you know, in humanity, what they thought were going to cure people. Let's face it, back in that time, they didn't know anything about, you know, human brains, how people thought. The people were sent there to get rid of them. Oh, I, I know. It's horrendous. I, I mean, they put people in little cages. They put you in a, a bathtub full of ice and held you down. Uh, they did horrendous, horrific things. And, and that's just the asylums, you know, uh, Norwich, Leftwich, there's a whole, they're all across the country, all got the same M.O., all rotten. And the energy of the emotions and the trauma and the drama, that's going to leave a mark there. It's going to be there. You know, it just is. Oh, I can think about that. I just think again, too, when people are going through shock treatments or let's face it. OK, well, you were showed you were a little aggressive. Well, how many people would be aggressive? Let's put it this way, right? a guy didn't like his wife anymore right he was having an affair so his wife might done a little strange things right but nothing you know which would warrant to be put in a mental institution hey they go up to the the judge and get a good attorney and boom his wife was in a mental institution for the rest of her life or the other way the guy was i mean people were put away for virtually no reason at all that's true. I've looked at some of the manuscripts. Some of it was uh, menopause. Some of it was excessive uh, self-abuse, supposedly. But it, it, it was just stupid reasons to put anybody in these places, and they accepted them, and it was okay. And it, that's what that alone is horrific, and it just blows my mind. Well, not just that. If you got committed into a mental institution, you weren't going to come out. No, you were going to die there. And, and another thing, like uh, if you had a child born illegitimately or you had a child and you didn't like the child, you could just send them away there. And it was like no questions asked. And like you said, you're going to live and die there. Yeah. And that's the point. And then like, too, I would think of any place a mental institution would be so rich with spirits, you know, a, a people that never went to the other side, never had closure because of what they went through you know if you were maybe a little strange but hey who isn't nowadays right 
<laughs> but back yeah. then, if somebody didn't like you, they had you could, or if they wanted your money, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Hey, like you married into a, a family that had a lot of money. Well, you have the wife committed, right? For you get control of all the money. She's never going to come out of uh, the mental institution. She's going to die there. And the thing is, the, the the richness of all these spirits floating around in these mental hospitals. You know, I'm talking about the turn of the century ones. Oh, yeah, probably even up to the 30s. Uh, people were just literally tortured. I mean, I have read where they would take patients, right? And because they were disorderly, they would put them in little cages and leave them in a cage. And, and they, that, they, they ate, slept in a cage. And then that, that was their whole life. Could you imagine 20, 30 years being locked up in a little cage? Right. If you wasn't mentally disturbed when you went there, you sure would be by being in there. And that's that's more horrific. And here's the other thing. Think about all the experiments that weren't documented that they did that were horrific because it might have been on the fringe of extremely illegal. Well, then, too, let's face it. You didn't have the American Medical Association really back then. So, I mean, to be even like in the 1800s, late 1800s, the 1850s, 1860s, you know, you could become a doctor really easy or a dentist. You could even take a mail order course. You know that. Right. As a matter of fact, my great grandfather, he was around the turn of the century and his friend was the doctor of the neighborhood, which was out in the woods. He was voted the doctor. So anything wrong, they went to him, and he was just a regular old farmer, you know, that they elected. So think about that. That's scary. But you figure, you know, you have somebody in a mental institution. I mean, let's face it. Maybe some of these doctors could have been strange, too. And, hey, what better way to experiment on patients? What are they going to say? If they say something, no one's going to believe them. Well, that's right. And then they came with this new thing called lobotomies. Think about all these doctors who never committed one, be- did one before. So they've gone to experiment with their patients that they've got thousands of. Imagine how many they botched. And even if they got them right, that really messed you up for life. That's scary. Well, I could, yeah. Like, remember the movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest? But I, I be, put, put it this way. You get one of those surgeries done, you're a zombie. You're going to walk around and you're just nothing anymore. You're not a human anymore. Right. You can't even get mad at Nurse Ratchet, who who's the one that probably got you there to begin with. That's scary stuff. No, you're nothing more than a zombie. You're just going to walk around and eat and, and stare at the wall. That's the rest of your life. Could you imagine that? So I am saying in these places, all the richness of all these spirits, you know, floating around on the property. And let's face it, like I said earlier. How many of them were buried just out there with unmarked graves? It is they're buried or, yeah, or, that, or cremated in their ashes, just dumped out, you know, in the garbage out there. Absolutely. I, it's true. And I've been to several of them. And I'll tell you what, I've been to several old prisons like that eastern state. You can see that gothic look and doom gloom prison from about five miles away going down interstate 70 going eastbound it just like beckons you i dare you to come here it's just rotten it's just rotten to look at much less when you go in it it's awful i know well we'll be back in four minutes you're listening to night dreams talk radio after dark uh this is gary we got james and maybe we'll have sam here in the next maybe 30 minutes uh we'll be back after this break Should've known that she 